last week a massive barge uh, that had lost power rammed into one of the supports on the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, basically obliterating the whole bridge. We've all seen the footage, uh, sending six construction workers to their probable deaths. They've recovered two. Uh, the accident basically shut down the port of Baltimore, uh, which is super not great for all that free trade uh, stuff that we uh, all enjoy. Peter, um, looking at the accident and the rebuilding, what are some uniquely libertarian uh, policy insights we might ponder? So I'm just going to be channeling Eric Baim here the entire time, uh, Reason reporter Eric Baim, who wrote a great piece uh, looking at the Foreign Dredge Act. The Foreign Dredge Act is not something you hear about very much, but it's basically just the Jones Act, except for dredging. It says that if you're going to do dredge work in a harbor, you have to be an American company. And this was a protectionist law passed around the early 1900s uh, designed to protect American industries. What has it done? It has made Americans worse off in a bunch of ways. So because you are restricting the supply of labor, that just means that there are fewer companies, fewer workers uh, that you can contract with. The, the labor supply is just not there. But the other thing is, by shielding American companies from competition, what they've done is they've ensured that American companies have not kept up with the time. Their equipment is out of date. Their work practices are out of date. They are going to be worse at the job than if we could bring in foreign companies that have, that have competed better, that are doing better work. Um, and so they've made things more expensive. They've made the quality of the work worse. And they've also made the labor supply. This law has also made the labor supply uh, as smaller, which is not great when you have a, a real crisis like this. It's not great all the time, though. And this is, I, th I think, you know, sort of one of the problems is it's unfortunate uh, it, it's unfortunate that the, the bridge collapsed, uh, but it's also unfortunate that we have to wait until a bridge collapses to start talking about things like repealing the Foreign Dredge Act. These policies are bad and destructive all the time. It's just that they are particularly bad and destructive in times of crisis. Catherine, what is something that occurred to your robot libertarian brain watching that bridge go down? Well, I wouldn't say that this occurred in the moment that the bridge went down, but um, immediately after, um, the folks who died or who have been lost from the bridge... Um, I think it's worth talking about those guys for a minute because um, those were foreign workers. So I guess not not dredgers because that's probably illegal. I'm sure actually they can employ foreign nationals. I don't know. But um, the um, the workers who were on the bridge at the time of the collapse were from El Salvador and Guatemala and Honduras and Mexico. And they were doing a hard job. Uh, they were, you know, filling potholes. They were doing repair work on the bridge. And um, just a really, really classic example of uh, exactly what, you know, what I think motivates me to be pro-immigration. These are guys who had families. Um, they were, you know, supporting people back home. They were supporting people here. They were doing they were doing super hard work and um, by all accounts doing it well. By all accounts, they were, you know, the, the quote from one of their colleagues is that they were all humble, hardworking men. Um, and I believe it. Um, you know, this is this is, you know, and it makes it all the more shocking that, um, you know, some folks in the kind of immediate aftermath of the collapse of the bridge tried to kind of hand wave that maybe somehow this was the fault of our wide open borders, um, that somehow like the foreigners had done it, I guess, or something um, exactly the opposite. You know, these the people who were trying to keep that bridge in good nick, who were trying to keep it, you know, functioning and healthy for Americans to drive over it and for our stuff to go under it, um, all had had come here from other countries. And um, I think, you know, it's absolutely a tragedy that those guys died. And I, I hope that they get their due um, and not the that they get kind of uh, scapegoated along with their fellow immigrants for anything that goes wrong. Nick, you saw some of that scapegoating on uh, television, I understand. Uh, well, I, I saw it on YouTube <clears throat> oh, because yeah, yeah. I uh, really don't use my TV for uh, live broadcasts anymore. But uh, Maria Bartiromo of Fox, who was Joey Ramone's money honey, uh, he, uh, despite being left wing, he in 2006, he wrote a song to her, which I'm going to uh, recite some of the lyrics to, Matt, because I <laughs> yes, know you'll love it. You. <laughs> uh, he says, uh, Joey Ramone. I watch you on the TV every single day. Those eyes make everything okay. I watch her every day. I watch her every night. She's really out of sight. Maria Bartiromo, Maria Bartiromo, Maria Bartiromo. Uh, Bartiromo was the uh, quickest person 
to uh, she was talking to the uh, urine uh, drug testing magnate Rick Scott, senator of Florida, who's a big you know we got to uh, build a big big wall on the border uh, guy about things when the bridge collapsed, and she said you know uh, people are talking about this as having some foul play due to the wide open border on the south. So she immediately invoked the idea that somehow. You know, Mexico was going to get back at America by letting, you know, sneaking people across the border who would then collapse the bridge somehow, even though it was a Singaporean flagged ship that lost control and slammed into it. It, it um, that kind of reaction is just a reminder that politics can always be dumber and stupider than you can possibly imagine in any given moment. And um, that is wrong. And we should be thinking about that. And we should also be wary of the immediate responses of people like, uh, you know, the president who immediately went on TV to say, hey, don't worry, we're covering the entire cost. Um, All sorts of things spin out. Uh, Attacks on the DEI selected mayor and governor of Maryland somehow. So people who were elected into office are somehow DEI hires. Um, You just see this kind of thing spinning out in such an insane way that even somebody as fundamentally stupid as david simon the uh you know the auteur behind the wire which is a great show actually had a great thread on twitter saying like you know there's going to be an investigation and we will find out what happened and that's really the starting point for this other than you know kind of uh saying a prayer for the uh you know for the dead and their families there's a great scene in front of the bridge in the second season of The Wire, one of the very final episodes where things start to come to a head. Uh, If you want a great little remembrance of that show and the bridge, recommend you watch it. Well, so we're talking about how many workers uh, in the, the, you know, in that, um, the the dock workers will be affected by this. And it's like, it's 8,000 people. Maybe it's 15,000 people. And we're also just already in this place where it's like, we will make good on those guys' salaries for as long as it takes, I guess, to rebuild this bridge. Like the the kind of immediate, reflexive, very, very expensive promises that have been made at all levels of government to just like um, cover everybody's costs forever as a result of this uh, of this accident is, you know, it's really troubling. It's like this is, you know, Joe Biden is not like our nice dad who's bailing us out after we got in a little fender bender. Like, this is big money. This is like very important stuff. This is people who should probably just retrain for their jobs. Um, I will say reasons paper, like the paper that we print the magazine on comes through the Port of Baltimore. So uh, if your magazine looks weird in a couple months, I guess that's what happened. I would uh, point out a couple of things. One is that uh, Clearly, we continue to lose the argument um, that the federal government should pay for any disaster. I think it was Glenn Garvin, Nick, uh, had a great piece in the 90s yeah. about one, one of the hurricanes. And that was kind of the uh, that was the beginning of the end uh, as far as the federal government just assuming that it must repay uh, absolutely everything at all times. Um, this bridge goes between Maryland and Maryland. Um, uh, and it's that it seems really uh like cheap skatey to point out um, such mm. things, but it's also true. And like, what do you have a federal government for? What do you have state and local government for? But again, we lose that argument. I mean, like the federal government threw so many uh, hundreds of billions of dollars or, you know, close to $200 billion to K through 12 schools because of COVID. Um, and if you want to see something crazy, watch what happens when that money finally draws uh, down um, mm. uh, over the next uh, year, year and a half. Uh, it's going to be uh, nuts. All right, uh, let's and get. And the uh, the government did the feds did pay for the rebuilding of the bridge in Minnesota that collapsed back in uh, two thousand seven. I guess it was the I thirty five bridge because there was the perfect mix of a bipartisan congressional delegation from Minnesota to, um, you know, in Washington at the time. So that is also going to be a play here. Whatever we did then, we will do ten times. Yeah, I mean, um, and like we're the federal government is all in the California high speed rail because Lord knows, uh, you know, you can't get a train from Fresno to Bakersfield without taxpayers from yeah. Massachusetts uh, chipping in. It doesn't make any sense at all. Um, but we're so far removed from a world where people are even conscious of the separate levels of governance. Uh, got a long way ahead. 
That was a clip from the latest episode of the Reason Roundtable podcast. To watch more clips, go here. Or to watch the whole show, go here. And subscribe to our podcast wherever you get yours.